Okay, Job chapter 32. So these three men cease to answer Job. Holy Spirit, because he was righteous in his own eyes. There's the sin of Job. Job is self-righteous. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu. Who? Where's this guy? He wasn't mentioned. When does he show up? This guy is like Elijah. He just shows up on the scene. Elijah shows up in 1 Kings 17, verse 1. Here he is. Boom. And Elijah speaks to a king. Elihu is speaking to a judge. So, <coughs> now from chapter 32 to 37, we're going to learn what Elihu has to say. In chapter 38, God will begin speaking. And Elihu is correct and proper. And probably the writer of the book. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu. He's not angry. He's wrathful. Now we don't know how long he's been there, but he's been listening to this conversation. And wrath, not anger, wrath. Uh, the son of Barkal, the Buzzite, and the kindred of Ram, against Job was his wrath kindled. So Elihu is angry with all four of them. Job and the three guys. Because, alright, here's the reason. He, Job, justified himself rather than God. Self-righteous. Look how good I am, look how well I am. Also against his three friends. Was his wrath kindled? It's written, the wrath, the wrath, the wrath. Kindled because they, the three friends, had found no answer. As we said all along, and yet had condemned Job. They've been wrong, according to the Holy Spirit. Now, Elihu hasn't spoken yet. We're told by the Holy Spirit what Elihu's attitude was before he speaks. He says, Job was a sinner of self-righteousness. Job praised himself instead of God. The three friends, they condemned him. We saw that, you know, Job, you're going to hell. Job, it's all your fault. Now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken. Because they were elder than he. Now, Elihu already got the fact that those three guys are not talking no more now. They got to the point they're not going to say anything, and they got to the point that Job is going to finish talking. Elihu is younger, and out of respect, I'm going to let the elders speak. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. Those three friends of Job did not help at all, did not do nothing at all for Job. Now, they had said proper things, but not about Job. It'd be like you go to a heart doctor. You got issues with your heart. Okay? And you go in there, and he starts telling you about milk is all your problems. You can't have milk. That has nothing to do with your heart. He starts telling you about, well, your feet. You know, you got to take care of your feet. That's not what you are practicing. That's not your specialty. And Elihu, the son of Barkel, Barkel, the Buzzite, answered, okay, now here he goes, and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Look at Job 15.10. Job 15.10. This is Eliphaz. He says, With us is both the gray-headed and very aged men. So, Elihu is younger. Very old. <laughs> gray-headed. 
Wherefore I was afraid. And there's not to show you my opinion. That's the first time opinion shows up. Afraid means, you know, if I open up my mouth, they're going to beat me to death like they did to Stephen. No. Afraid is, hey, you guys are more respectable than me. It's called honoring. He said, I'm going to show you my opinion. I said, they should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Time gains wisdom. What do you say? But there's a spirit in man and the inspiration, that's the first time that word shows up, of the Almighty giveth them understanding. God gives the true understanding. Therefore I said, hearken unto me. Now look what he said. You ready? Verse 7, I said. Therefore I said. That is in the language of the English language is, as is being written, this is what I said. So being the first person, this is probably our writer. You see, this happened, then I said this. Then I did this. He, Job, the three friends, but I. That's why many say that this is Elihu writing the book. Great men are not always wise. Who? Neither do the aged understand judgment. So don't think just because, oh, you're old and, and, and old. There are plenty of old people who do not know nothing. And when you got a guy who's gray-headed, wrinkles, and he has lived life many, many, many years. And you say, well, have you ever believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Absolutely not. That guy don't know nothing. And that guy may be a nuclear physicist. He don't know nothing. That guy may have cured millions of people of cancers. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know nothing. So take that. Just because you're old does not mean you got wisdom. Some people are the older they get, the more stupider they get. There are very old people that believe there's a man that lives up north and he comes December 24th and December 25th. But they won't believe God. Therefore I said, hearken to me. I, see the, see the, see the pronouns right now? It's him writing. I will show you my opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave you time. I sat there. I was patient. I was long-suffering. You made me mad. But I didn't break in. I didn't interrupt at whenever he shows up. I gave ear to your reasons. While you searched out what, I, what to say. Yea. I attended, that's the first time that word shows up, onto you. I attended. I, 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 I heard you. I gave you the time. And behold, there was none of you that convinced, that's the first time that word shows up, Job. Or that answered his words. They're backing up when Job said, you remember when Job said, you're a physician, physician of no value, give me no answers? Elihu says, that's true. I heard you guys. Man, you're horrible. Least ye, ye, the, the friends, should say, we have found out wisdom. God trusted man, thrusts man down, not man. You know, he says, listen, I held my peace, I kept quiet, and if I would have said something, you would come up and, you know, rebuke me. So I gave it time. I waited until you were done. Now he has not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speech. They were amazed. 
and answered no more. They left off speaking. They're all, they're, that's it. They're done. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still, and answered no more. You're not going to hear anything from... Uh, let's see, I get the angel here real quick. You will not hear anything from Eliphaz no more. You will not hear from Bildad no more. And so far, you will not. That's it. They're all done. They will bring Job an offering, as God said, but they're not going to speak no more in the book of Job. He said, when, and he's sitting there, he, he's with these men, you know what, they're silenced, they're blinking their eyes, angry and stuff like that. He, you know, he sat there like, okay, you guys must be done. My turn. That's respect. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show you my opinion. Opinion, opinion, opinion. Wrath, wrath, wrath. For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. That's the first time constraint shows up. I, I, I'm bulging at the scene. Now watch this. Matthew 9.17, Mark 2.22, and Luke 5.37. My belly is as wine, which has no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. That's the parable that Jesus gave. So you know, like the wine, you can't put new wine in old bottles. You gotta put new wine in new bottles. Look at here. Listen, when Jesus spoke the words that he spoke, if you knew the Old Testament, they know exactly what Jesus was talking about. And when he gave that parable about the new wine in the bottle, uh, somewhere, I think it's Job. And El Elihu saying, I am so full of I have to say something that if I don't, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to explode in front of you. I am new wine, he's saying, in an old bottle, and I'm going to burst if I don't do nothing. And remember, he's wrath. He's, he's very, very angry, but he's not going to answer angry. That's what a lot of people want me to do. When I preach on the street, but you know, I watched the videos. I didn't answer angrily. I just answered calm. You got angry because I was answering you with the truth. I will speak that I may be refreshed. The only way it's going, the only way I'm, I'm going to feel good. The only way I'm going, I got, I got to say what I have to say. If I don't, you're going to see me explode. And if I explode. I'm going to say some things I should not say. I'm going to be respectful to your men, to you men, your age. I'm going to be respectful for your age and what you said, but you didn't say nothing. And even today, you know, you are not talk to that woman that way. Hey, you're wrong. And I'm going to correct you with the Bible. This is what life is going to now, not with the Bible, but. I will open my lips and answer. He's going to let off some steam. That's what he's going to do. Let me not. I pray you accept any man's person. Oh, you're a judge? Excuse me, your honor. I, I, I won't judge you. No, he's not going to do that. Oh, are you this family? This important elite kind of family? Oh, your highness, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, he's not going to do that. He's going to throw some punches. He's going to throw some words. And he doesn't care who they are, what they are, what they do, what could be the consequences. He's going to tell them the truth. That's what every Christian should do. Neither let me give flattering titles unto men. What are those flattering titles Jesus said? Call no man your father, call no man your master, and call no man rabbi. Those are titles. DD, Doctor of Divinity. There are people who uh, I can't stand is they give them an honorary degree. They never earned it. They didn't pay for it. And you got people who have worked and have paid and done the study to get that diploma. 
and you get somebody come along, they give enough money, and they get that. That's that's what he's talking about. You got men, in, and I heard people say, you know, DD. You got men in the ministry that they went through the classes, they studied the classes, they worked, and they did. They deserve that title. For I know not how to give flattery titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. If I start giving, if I start throwing titles out there, you know, and that's the thing they do today in in the workplace. They give you a more brainy word kind of title for somebody who empties garbage cans. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it? Uh, let's see if I can remember. Uh, oh, 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 when I worked for the, for the newspaper, we were media. I don't know. We had some big long words, you know, the paper that come from trees and all that and driving. We, we had this whole thing, and that's just a brainless title. I got to bring this title for you, the Pope, who calls himself uh, the High Father or the Heavenly Father. And Jesus said that title only belongs to God himself. Now, you meet a policeman, you go up to that policeman and you say, Officer, whatever his last name is, you treat him with respect. That's not what we're talking about here as far as the title. Now, I have been in, in elevators. I was in a hospital. I was in a place, and a Catholic priest with a shirt on backwards walks in. And, you know, the people, oh, hi, hi Father, hi, Father. And I looked at him and said, hi, phony. Where are you cook? He ain't no father. Well, well, he's the father. I said, sir, are you married? No, I'm not married. I, Whoa. They call you father? <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of father. Well, there's only one kind of, you know. Lucky I had to go way up in the elevator. But, you know, those are those are the titles. There are false, unclean titles. That's the, anybody, in the, like I said, again, in the ministry, if they did a doctorate and they earned that doctorate, now, I have never done the PhD, so don't call me a PhD, but I am a doctor. And some people call that a question. I did the studies. I did the work. I earned it. A police officer, a, a military man, and I think military people should have some kind of honor besides sergeant, is that man went through the boot camp, that man went through the training, that man has been designed in the Army, Navy, whatever branch of service, and he earns that title of respect. And there's no title to say, sir, thank you for serving. That's a title for a serviceman. Firefighters and all that, thank you sir, for fighting fires and doing paramedic work. But when you got a woman who's in the pulpit preaching, don't you dare call her preacher. Don't you dare call her pastor because the Bible says you're not to. That woman, that woman or any woman does, does not deserve the title of that office when the Bible says no. Uh, 